Welcome back 3D students. In this video I'm going to go over with you how to actually make the neon sign mesh objects. And I'm not going to give you a step-by-step -step series of videos showing you exactly how to make every single bit of this. I'm just going to go over some things with you that will help you make your sign. So let's start by looking at this word here. You can see it's in script and if you were to write this you would kind of go like this and maybe you would go like that, but we're not going to do it that way because our line would be really messy. So we need to break this down. So this is one piece. This is one piece. This is one piece. This. This is one piece. This is one piece. This is one piece. This is one piece. Is one piece. And so forth and so on. And this is how I broke it down. Here's the first piece I made. Here's the second piece. Third, fourth. Actually, I just started messing with this one just to see what I could do. Fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. You can see how I broke this word down. So to show you how I did this, I'm going to go ahead and hide this layer here and I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this new sign and I'm going to start creating my things in this layer it's now the active layer so when you create something like this you use lines and lines are also sometimes called splines or curves or control curves. Uh, there are basically lines with points on them that you can manipulate to control the shape of the curve. So let's click the plus sign and go to shapes and make sure you have splines selected. And here are the different splines we can create. We're going to use a line for the most part. So click line and then you're going to want to click and wherever you have a curve you're going to want to click and I'm not clicking and dragging I'm just clicking and then when you finish you right click. Now the reason this line is thick like that and yours won't be is because I have checked these two boxes right here. Enable and render, enable in viewport. Yours will probably look like this. When you open up this uh, uh, line in the modifier stack here you'll see vertex, segment, and, and spline. This is just like subobject modeling a mesh. When you select vertex you can select any vertex on the line and move it around. You can also convert them into curves. So usually what I do when I'm doing something curvy like this is I select all the vertices and then I right click and I convert them to Beziers. They can also be Bezier corners. The default is corners. They can also be something called smooth. I'm going to convert them to Beziers. And then I'm going to select this one and I'm going to click in the middle between the X and Y axis like so to activate or lock in those two axes and I'm just going to move these handles around. You can also move the point. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. And you can see that very quickly we can have our first shape. Now to make it look like a neon sign or the you know a piece of glass that is filled with neon gas, which is what a neon sign is, it needs to look like more than a line. So you come over here to the settings for the neon sign and you check enable and render and enable in viewport. And then you give it a thickness. I gave mine a thickness of three. Yours might be different. Just give it a thickness until it covers up or it sort of matches the sign you're working with. And then very importantly you need to come down here and check cap. And then make sure quad cap is checked and segments equals three. If you don't check that then you end up with a square end like this. If you have less than three segments, then you end up with a pointy end like that. Cap, quad cap, three. And sphere should be one. And then you would move on to the next one. Click create, click line, and I'm going to create this shape now. And then click here to start your line and everywhere there's going to be a curve or a corner needs to have a point. So click there and just move your mouse, don't click and drag. And when you come to a place like this, think of it as a clock face. There needs to be a point 
at each quarter of the clock. So 9, 6, and 3 here as well. 12, 3, 6, and 9. And then you can right click to finish. Now this is already thick so I'm going to go to the Modify tab and I'm going to open it up, select Vertex, select all the vertices, and then I'm going to right click and convert them to Beziers. Now I could move them with the um, uh, radial thickness activated, but I think that's more difficult. So I usually turn this off and then I work on it here. Make sure you have X and Y together selected. Makes it easier to move. And you can see that if we think about these circles as a clock face, that it works out very nicely. The points always end up in the same place. Now if you try to move one and you find that you can't move it like you want, you may have only one axis locked in. And you can clearly see we have a nice curve here. So I'm going to re-enable the radial thickness and then I would move on to the next piece. One thing you need to make sure of is that where they are together here like this, you should have this so it is, looks like it's fused and not sticking out like that. To do closed letters like this, it's the same thing. You go to the Create tab, you select Line, and you just click and move your mouse. Don't click and drag. Just click and move your mouse. And you're creating control points at each corner. Now when you get to the end, if you click right on that last one, or the first one, it asks you to close the spline. You want to say yes, and that makes it a closed shape. Now to make it look rounded like this, like these corners are, what we need to do is come over here and select all the vertices, go to vertex mode, select all the vertices, and scroll down here and find fillet. And if you fillet it about 0.5, it rounds all those corners off really nicely. Now there are other shapes you can use here besides just lines. You can use circles and uh, eggs and rectangles and things, but I find that the arc is a better way to make a circle unless it's a closed circle. To use an arc, you click on one end and drag to the other end, let go of your mouse, and then move it. You just move your mouse until you get the arc like you want and click to finish. That's how you make an arc. And that's the way I did these pieces. After you've created some letters, uh, you need to also, one thing I forgot to mention, is look all the way down to the bottom and find the interpolation setting. If you sometimes you have to close some of these to find it. It's down here, it's interpolation, and you need to change that to something like 25. I think the default is 6. And at 6, what happens is you get a very uh, chunky line where you can see the segments here. Let me change it to 3, and you can see clearly what that does. You change it to 25, that smooths your line out, and that's what you want. So make sure you change each one of those to 25. Now, if you were doing something like this, you can see this is a very big line here, this F. And this is a very big shape here. So what I would do is I would get line, and I would start somewhere, and remember the clock face. 6, 3, 12, curve, 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 6, 9, 12, 12, 3, curve, curve, curve. Remember the clock face. Finish there. And then I would come here and turn this off. Go to vertex mode. Select all the vertices. Right click, convert them to Beziers. And begin to straighten it out.
And you can see with a little practice, you can get pretty fast. So this one's actually not as complicated as I thought it was. It's just a few big shapes that just require a, you know, a lot of points. Now don't put too many points on your curves. You want as few points as possible to make that curve happen. Any curve that's totally round like this should have only three points. Think of a clock face. Where there's a curve, there needs to be a point. Where there's an end, there needs to be a point. Where there's a corner, there needs to be a point. So this one would have one, two, three, four, five points. And when we come back in the next video, I'm going to show you how to attach all your pieces, convert them into editable polys, and put materials on them. And I'll see you then.